nice ride, people. Up the tube and all that. We are back. We're back on the beach. Me and Chris, we've uh, decided to make a trip up here. Um, obviously, I couldn't get away from work early yesterday. So, uh, we got up this morning, two o'clock. We've done a two hour drive. It's literally just after four now. I think we're coming up to high water. But um, yeah, we're back out. We're back out on the beach again. See if we can get a few more cod. And uh, hopefully I would like to get see a blonde ray today or maybe even a blue nose skate. Um, a one or two, I think it's just maybe the one has come out from Abbotsbury. So um, if I could get one out, that would be incredible. I know they're really rare fish and it's really unlikely, but at the end of the day, if you've got the bait out there, you've got a chance. I think he had it on Garfish. It is on the social medias and stuff. If you look at the Chesil page on Facebook, but I mean, to get one of them would be a dream, especially down here anyway. I know they're not huge, but I mean, you know, double figure fish is the goal for today. I mean, we're probably gonna catch lots of bits and pieces. Well, hopefully we do. I think this is the fourth session now, uh, maybe the fifth session in the last month. Um, but yeah, we've been on the fish, we've been having a good time. So why not make the most of it while the fish are here, come back again. We are here all day, we're here for a 12 hour session. Literally just turned up, got everything out, got the rods out. Got to get some rigs out now, if I can see where they are. Something a little bit different today, I didn't mention in my last video. Most of the cod I had last week on the sand hill and the crab were on a up and over rig, running up and over. So I have made a couple. Uh, Chris hasn't got any, so I'm going to go through, I'll go through later. So I'll make one on the channel and then throw it to Chris. So he's got a running up and over to use as well because um, yeah, see, it seemed to outfish the pulley panel last week. So let's see if we can bag up on a card. Right, where are we? Where are we? Is that one? Yeah. Obviously, there you go. If you uh, pop in, pop back to the other video after this, I'm going to go through what, uh, how it works and how it's set up and stuff like that. It's a bit too dark to do it now, but what I'll do is I'll build one later with a video on. And uh, yeah, that one will be for Chris because, you know, it's a really good rig and Chris hasn't used it before. So I'll go through it with him and then he's got one to take home that, so then he can copy it. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. Right, so what we're going to go for first. So baits for today are, couldn't get any worm guys. Uh, obviously we decided to come yesterday. So it was two in the morning. I don't expect Brendan to wake up that early. I mean, he might've been awake. You never know, it is a weekend. But we've got some regular sardines. We've got one pack of those, because obviously I am trying for a blue nose skate. We've got frozen crabs. We've got lots of packs of frozen crabs. And also, did I? yeah, lots and lots and lots, oh, sorry guys, of uh, frozen sand eels. So we're gonna fish, uh, fish baits one rod and um, crab baits on the other. Obviously, I'm not going to go, last week I ended up going both crab, um, I'm not going to do that today, I'm literally going to stick one for crab because, you know, I do want to try and get a ray out and uh, probably not likely to catch them on a good old, good old softy. So, oh, I've got some ones. there you go, lovely frozen sand eels. Oh, solidly frozen. nice one there hope you guys are doing well hope you've all been catching a few fish i know chesel has been fishing really well lately and uh don't think you have to cast mega far guys uh last week obviously we both had cod i was casting about 100 yards maybe just over and uh chris was oh this is not a knock on chris because chris is my friend and uh we've been fishing together for years you know i'm not saying that he can cast, so he can cast, he can cast plenty far enough to catch fish, he proved that last week. But um, obviously he doesn't practice his casting and stuff like that. So, uh, but he was fishing about uh, 60, maybe 70 yards, and he was still, and sometimes 50 yards, and he was still banging the cod in. So it's not about who can cast the furthest and all that kind of stuff, obviously. And last week the conditions were literally flat and uh, the water was dead clear. Today, you might be able to hear it in the video, uh, there is a little bit of a swell on, not massive, just a little bit. So we are going to get the old uh, gaff out just in case. Um, we don't, have, if we don't have to use it, we're not going to use it. But it also doubles up as a T-bar, which is uh, really handy because it's only small. You can uh, just 
quickly use it, bosh, get your fish off, and then uh, you're back out fishing. So there we go, head and tail, guys. Head and tail, single sand eel, and uh, that there, hopefully, will see me a blonde. Right, I'm just going to get a crab bait mix, uh, wrapped up now, get myself a coffee on, because the kettle's boiled, and uh, yeah, hopefully, we'll bring you back with a fish in a bit. Bosh, right, people, well, first cast has just come in. Uh, on the sand eel bait, just had this little pout. So we're off the mark. Obviously, <laughs> it's always nice to get an early fish. So we're not blanking today. Uh, this one is perfect size. Obviously, you know that we've been after a conga the last few times we've been up and we haven't got one yet. So uh, I am actually gonna keep this one and put it in the bait tray, uh, cut the two sides off and I'll put two nice conga baits for later on, just in case we don't catch any more. If we catch any more, they will be going back, but uh, we are just going to keep the one, but hopefully we'll see us a nice pond out. Ratchet just started going then. On the sand eel bake, so hopefully we'll uh, see, us, <laughs> see us a rain in a minute. He's still pulling away. I've got to go and check it in a bit. Bosh, right then, people. Ah. Fish number two. Well, fish number two for the camera, fish number three, really. Uh, I did have a uh, little boot lace eel. Uh, it was just lip hooked, so I unhooked it out of the water and uh, got it straight back. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's a bit, it's, a, it's very early in, in the day to be getting it covered in snot. Um, I don't, you can probably see on the camera now, the light's just about to come up. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully we're in for a good day and it's not too sunny. As long as that sun don't come through too much, we should see a few more fish out. There you go, the classic dog fish. We do love a dog fish on this channel. So, especially Steve barking away. But uh, yeah, there you go. Fish number three. The fish are out there, they are still feeding. So with any luck, we'll see a few more species out tonight and maybe even a proper sized cod. But they're all welcome, all the same. I'm gonna get this little chap back. Conditions are a little bit different, definitely. Now the lights come up, there's a little bit of color in the water. Um, obviously there's a lot bigger swell today. There was literally no swell the other day and it was dead clear. So, you know, that's something to take into consideration. So uh, here's another big tide. I think it's just started dropping. So it's about the same size tide as uh, last time we fished here. Uh, there has been a bigger tide since, but uh, yeah. Looks like we're on for some fish. Uh, Rods are bent over in the tide, which is a bonus. So there's plenty of tide out there. Oh, the clicker's slowly clicking away. I'll tighten that up in a minute. I'll just put the bait out again. But yeah, so on the fish, hopefully we'll see some mega ones. Right, I'm gonna get back to it. God, there's a proper naughty little chilly wind on tonight. Tonight, today, <laughs> one of them. But uh, yeah, there you go. It's been that early since I got up. Can't even talk very well. But um, yeah, it's definitely a cold wind coming through. It's westerly today and uh, yeah, absolutely freezing. Right, anyway, I'm gonna get warmed up, get me a coffee on in a bit. Oh, it's right there, people, I'll give you light. <laughs> right, anyway, just reeled in. We've had a first light pout, <laughs> another little chap. Absolutely, but look at the size of the eyes on it. Obviously that helps them to feed down in the dark, obviously along with the scent as well, but absolutely magnificent. Only a little chap, but uh, they do actually get quite big up here on this beach. So hopefully we get a nice big one, but uh, he's, he's fine, he'll go back. So uh, I won't keep him out of the water long. Literally just do this little clip and then away she goes. But uh, yeah, buzzing, looks lovely. The water's not as uh, tingy as I thought it was. It's actually really clear. The waves have dropped a little bit now. I think the winds swung around northwesterly. I think it's northwesterly till midday. Uh, we're just after high water. And then uh, it goes westerly this afternoon and uh, starts getting really like blowy towards the end of the day. So uh, hopefully, I know over the next few days it's up to like 30s and 40s gusting. So uh, yeah, today's the only day we could really get out. So I'm buzzing. We've got a full, well, what time is it now? I think it's about half six, nearly seven o'clock. We're probably going to fish till about seven and then make our way home. So uh, hopefully we get a few more fish out. I mean, not a bad start. We've had four fish already in the dark. But uh, yeah, in the daytime, generally like the small pest, people call them pest fish, they are fish. Pest fish 
seem to uh, disappear a little bit and uh, gives a chance for the bigger fish to get on the baits. So hopefully we see a few more species. It would be nice to get a nice big bream today. Uh, Granddad hasn't had a bream yet. Well, he's had one, but he wants a couple for the freezer. Stock up for the winter. But uh, I don't think they'll be around much longer, so it'd be nice to get a couple big ones out. Obviously all the small stuff goes back, guys, as you know. But, uh, yeah, anyway, we've got to get this little chap back. So, <laughs> see you in a bit. Well, it's right, just quickly, guys, for those of you that are new to the channel, or don't go fishing, or maybe don't even use this rig, and you haven't seen any of my other videos. Uh, recently, I have been started, started to use the running up and over, which consists of a leg clip. That's the one you want. Rig body, about two foot. And then pulley bead with a uh, breakaway imp on it. And that's a seven ounce lead down to a hundred pound swivel. And then we've got about a four foot trace. And I've got a single Sakuma extra, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the technical words. It's a Sakuma, what are these called? These X? XT extras or something. I don't know, <laughs> Sakuma extras, you'll see on the packet anyway. But uh, yeah, I've got a size three there. Actually, I will I will have a look in my bag in a minute and find it, but. Manta extra, I think that's what it's called. Sakuma Manta extra, size three. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Anyway, so that's like, that's the components. And uh, on this one, we've got them on both rigs today, because uh, I had a few cod on them last time. And uh, they were favoring that rig. I think it's because it sits to the bottom a little bit better. Uh, especially when we've got a nice bit of tide running. So, sand deal, just trim the tail off, trim the head off, just so when it hits the water and starts to defrost, it allows for the blood and the scent to come out of it. And then we're gonna hook the sand deal, but when we hook the sand deal with a single hook, what I like to do is hook it up more near the middle of the body, so it looks a bit like that. So not right at the end, so the hook's coming out here, but right up there. So if a ray comes along, smashes it, or a cod. We had a couple of cod on the uh, sand eels last week. Last week? Yeah, I mean, it is last week, actually. Oh, it's been a minute. I thought it was only a few days, but it hasn't. It's been a few days. Right. And there we go. We just whip, whip, whip. Nay, 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 as we do. Bosh. There we go. You don't have to be over excessive with it. Um, a lot of people put like a stop knot at the top or a stop bead. But what I like to do is just put an extra bit of elastic around the eye and the knot. And uh, that seems to work for me. Stops the bait going up if uh, obviously on impact when it hits the water. Sort of like a bait shield. So they put like a little bead and then a sequin and it sort of acts like a bait shield so the bait doesn't shoot up. But I've been getting away with it, so it is what it is. So obviously this clip then attaches to your main line and then your hook length goes over that little hook there and then back down oh there we go to the eye of the beholder now onto the imp and uh yeah there you go nice and compact aerodynamic hit that one out and as soon as it hits the water bang that lead it's the bottom this trace goes flowing in the tide and uh yeah it's been doing really well lately so hopefully we'll see us some more See us a few more fish and uh, it's something for you guys to try on the bank. Right, anyway, let's get back to fishing in a right, bit. We've got uh, both rods out. Ties well on its way out now, so there's a nice bit out there. We've got a bend in both the rods. This lead's just starting to settle now. It's been bumping around a little bit. Or it might have been a fish on the way down. Probably not, but you never know. Hopefully, today we can get some bites on camera. Um, hopefully the wind do not pick up too much. You know, as you all know, I'm a bit of a tight ass. I haven't got a mic yet, but <laughs> it's what it is. I do everything off the phone at the end of the day. It's just a diary, isn't it? But uh, yeah, we've been doing really well lately. The last, I think it, this is the fifth trip. So we've done five trips and we've got fish every time. So hopefully today's no different. We see a bulk, loads of species and uh, maybe that mythical beast. Obviously, Chesil Beach is Chesil Beach, you know. Sometimes it fishes, sometimes it doesn't. So you've got to come in and not really expect to get anything major. And then when you do, it's like a big surprise. Obviously, there have been a few really, like, not 
well, I say rare, like, they're not Pokemon cards, are they? But, uh, like, some blue nose skate and things like that popping up on the beach. It'd be lovely to get into something like that. Um, I've bought some sardines today as well. So, uh, a little bit later on, on the, on the incoming tide, I'll uh, try a few of those, see if we can't see us a, a different species out. We've had loads, obviously, the last few days. But hopefully, we'll get a few uh, takes on camera. I know it's a bit annoying sometimes, you know, when you're watching the videos and that, it's just literally the fish, but sometimes you don't have a choice. Like, obviously, the camera's not rolling, the rod bends over, you don't have a chance to put the camera on. Or you go to put the camera on, and you end up missing the fish. So uh, obviously the fish is more important. You know, the camera is secondary really to me. But it would be nice to get a few takes and uh, hit a few fish, reel them in and see what the mystery pies is. Oh, is that a bite? Nah, just a bit of wind. There is a bit of a breeze coming through, guys, but. What it is. Anyway, if I get a bite, I'll smack the camera on and uh, we'll give it a hit, see what we've got. In a bit. Right, guys, well, just had a few little knock knock knocks. We're going to give it a little check. Last thing you want to do is be fishing and uh, either the bait's gone or there's a fish on, we're wasting time. Let's see if there's any weight there. Yeah, a little bit of weight there. Wonder what it could be. Could it be a card? Could it be a dog? Could it be a bream? Oh, there you go. Sand eel bait. Lovely little bream. Get him on it. Perfectly through the bottom lip. There we go. <laughs> there you go, guys. Not the biggest bream in the world, but an absolute peach. Give me a proper little tap as well. So, uh, yeah. There you go. And there was me thinking it was the dogfish. Right, gonna get this little chap back. Hopefully, we'll have a few more fish in a bit. Right, guys, just a quick one. Obviously, one thing I do like about using this new rig, well, it's not new, is it? That I have, that I have noticed since I've been using the uh, up, running up and over, is that I'm getting a lot more fish. Um, obviously, they're not all massive, but I seem to be getting a lot more bites. I've had, uh, I think, five fish so far. So, and uh, obviously, Chris is using pulley panels and uh, hasn't had a fish so far. So, I'm gonna make him a rig in a minute. Literally, I'm gonna do it on the camera so you can all see. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put him a rig on and then see if that makes a difference for him. But it might not, but it might do, you know. Sometimes rigs do make a difference, sometimes they don't. Um, obviously, we're using the same baits and stuff like that, and we're right next to each other, so it's a bit strange. But obviously, I'll give Chris a real ass whipping today. I'm sure he'll uh, put, slap me back and be placed with a few cod in a bit once that tide starts pulling again. But um, yeah, anyway, gonna get this bait on, get it sent out, and uh, yeah, then we'll make a rig. Right, guys. We are going to go into the bag, make a quick, very quick, and make Chris a quick rig. Um, I've got so, Rovex 10X, so I use for my rig body, and I also use it for my trace as well. Um, it's just really tough, really strong, and uh, yeah, gets all the fish in. I mean, that that you just sit then, I just pulled that fish in. Small fish, I know, but if an anaconda come take hold of it, and uh, I'd still end up getting the fish in. I mean, so it doesn't really matter whether you use small line or anything like that. Well, to me, it doesn't. And uh, you still get the small fish. And if you do get a chance of hooking in so big, you ain't gonna lose it. So there you go. And that is one millimetre thick, all around. So we're gonna cut ourselves about two foot of that. gone for a Tronex size 5 bait hook. That's his hook of choice. Righty root, let's go have a look at that. Swivels, 100 pound.
going to have to bear with them a minute. I should have got it all out ready, really. But here's one of theirs. The rig one is a bit of a mess. Right, let's get that one tied off. Goes. Bit of loop. Use the scissors, put it in the eye. Pull that down. Trim the tag end. And there you go. For those of you that don't know, that's what it looked like. I'll show you the knot I do as well. Because I, I do forget sometimes that not everyone's an angler. I have a few people that watch that uh, don't even fish. So. I hope I've got some, some bits and pieces here. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, they're the rig bait clips. Sakuma. I've learned my lesson from buying cheap bits and pieces. <laughs> they end up uh, breaking and stuff like that. So I do my terminal little bits, I usually stick with Sakuma. And uh, I've got the breakaway imps there. Uh, pulley beads, I don't. Pulley bee's a pulley bee, don't it? I don't think that's uh, anything major. But I just use my scissors. A lot of people have rig tighteners. I just hook that over my scissors, pull the knot. <sighs> nice and tight. There's no way that's coming off. Trim the tag end. Obviously, a lot of people do this differently, but this is the way I do it. And I've already done it wrong, guys. There you go. That's because I'm talking to you. <laughs> Right, so I've just cut that clip back off. I need to get myself uh, an imp. Oh. That's what they look like when you get them from the shop. They don't come ready made, so you get two parts. making Chris do this himself really but <laughs> you know that's what friends are for and all that isn't it all open each other out so you get this part the metal part and then you get the clip can be a bit fiddly guys so bear with uh, there is a tool you can buy to do it but I'm just tight and cheap I'll just get my nail under and then force it through oh <laughs> just nearly lost it come on Make sure you put them on the right way as well. So you want that bit there at the top and then that small bit. So they're both, them two are both facing upwards. So if you put it on upside down, it won't work. And then they're a nightmare to get back off again. There we go, that's on. Pulley bead. Pulley, pulley, pulley. Right, so there you go, just start again. Swivel on, pulley bead on, and then on that pulley bead, you're gonna put your imp, like you would the lead weight, but then you're gonna put it all, you're gonna pull it back on itself so it's the opposite weight on the imp. There you go, so it's at the top, like that. So then when you put your lead on, you can still uh, put your hook on it so it's not upside down. Then tie your bait clip. All I do is go through, make the loop, one, two, and on the third one, go back through the loop, bit of loop, scissors, just so it's to hold on, so you can pull it down tight, so you know when you can do a fish, it's not going to pull it loose. Trim the tag end, and there you go. Right, so for the next bit, if you tie your shot cleaner on before you cut it, off the reel, or whatever you want to use for trace line, I use the same, a lot of people don't, but with this rig, it doesn't seem to get twisted. Um, but with a pulley panel, if you use the rig body and the hook length with the same material, it seems to uh, tangle for some reason. Don't know why. Pull that down tight. Tag end off. 
Right, so now what you're going to do is pull line off and then you want to grab this end and you want to do one length and then when you go back grab about an inch or two above the bottom between your fingers snip that there and then same with your hook one two three i wouldn't use this hook i use the manta extra when i'm using this rig but this is what chris wants to use so it is what it is and then put the hook through the bottom of the scissors bit of loop pull it down nice and tight trim that tag end do this over your bag guys you know i know it's only little bits of plastic but litter's litter at the end of the day isn't it so and then there you have it so just quickly check it by uh pulling it over the little lip there like so and then hook the hook on to the imp it's a little bit fiddly oh we got it first time and just check that it sits right on the rig there you go so there you go all clips down sits nicely so we're going to get a lead on there chris is going to clip it on put a nice crab bait on and send it out and see if that makes a difference and uh, yeah, there you go. So if you guys want to try that at home, you never know, might make you, might get you a few more fish. It has got me a few more fish, especially on Chesil Beach. So uh, yeah, anyway, in a bit. Time to check the crab bait. I think it's been eaten. There you go guys, absolutely stripped. I mean, we've been, I'm bringing the rods in like every 15, 20 minutes. No bait, I think there's a lot of bream in that out there, pecking away at it. Obviously the odd one does get hooked, but yeah, not all of them. <laughs> I've got a little bit of line on there as well. Bringing in lots of this guys, lots of little bits of line like this just picking it up on the grip lead. So with that, I'm just gonna literally put it in my bag, take it home, dispose of it properly. But um, yeah. Had a few taps on that for a while, so I think the bream will just peck, 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 peck in, and uh, yeah, took all the bait. So, another crab bait. We are using frozen crabs. Uh, we're using frozen crabs. We had a couple of live, but uh, mainly frozen. So they are definitely working as uh, you would have seen on the last video. I might get the uh, sardines out in a minute, bake one of them up, send it out. Sand eel rod there, bobbing away. I think we've got another little fish on it. So we'll get this bait bound on, sent out, and uh, hopefully see us uh, another fish. But that's what it's like at the minute, guys, fishing up chisel. There's plenty of fish here, so, uh, you know, they're not at range either. A lot of the fish are like 50, 50, 60 yards. But I've been hitting them a bit further than that, about 100. But Chris is still getting bites as well. Just had his uh, first fish, a little bream. So the rig does work. The running up and over, literally changed over to it and I've uh, got fishing. So, try and get a video of Chris bringing a few fish in today. Might have to make him up another one for his other rod. He has got a pulley pedal on that, so he's gonna leave it on for a minute, see if it makes a difference. Yeah, that one's bobbing away nicely. Ooh. Gonna get this one on, send it out, and uh, hopefully get us a card. Well, just brought that sand deal bait in. <laughs> Absolutely gone. All that's left is a bit of elastic. 
So I'm going to take that off, try something a little different. I'm going to put a sardine bait out. Um, obviously, it's daytime, so there should be, should be, I'm saying, less dogfish around. So hopefully I'll give it a chance for a nice ray or something of that calibre to home in on it and pick it up. Or maybe a bass. A bass would be nice. We haven't had a bass for well, I've never had a bass off Chesil Beach. So we shall see, we shall see. Still sticking to the same size baits, guys. So probably gonna get three or four baits off of each of these. There, so it stays nice and frozen. Same thing, tail off, just behind the back of the head. And uh, I'm gonna go down the middle. Yeah. I'm gonna go straight down the middle of the bait. This one I'm gonna cut into half. So there's two baits there. Uh, this this bit here I'm going to put on hold. This the stomach, obviously it's got all the guts in it and the scent, so it's a lot thinner, so it'll be easier to cast. Uh, obviously, try and keep these sardines as frozen as you possibly can, because uh, once they start to defrost, they go really mushy, and. Uh, you end up with no, basically no bait, just a big smudge. And it's really hard to uh, get a good whip on it. Keep the line straight. You can use baiting tools, baiting needles. I use a knitting needle sometimes, um, but when they're frozen like this, it's quite easy to keep it straight as you're baiting it along. Oh, a little bit of whipping underneath keep the bait on the hook. Bosh, there you have it. Nice, slim sardine bait, that'll cast nicely. And uh, hopefully, see it's a different species of fish. Right, Bosh, just get it. Well guys, <laughs> would you believe it? Grab my Chris, hold him up for the camera, boys. There you go, look. <laughs> First cod on the bank and there's still plenty of hours left in the day. Right, let's get some more baits out. Bosh, and there you have it. Two chisel codlin, one after the other. Were they both on the same bait? Uh, one on softy and one on peeler. <laughs> Bosh, I think it was only a matter of time before he started smashing them out. Give us a smile then so we can get a picture. In a bit. Here he goes again. <laughs> Is it cod number three, boys and girls? Smashing them out now. Or is it a dogfish? Is it a cod? Is it a dogfish? Cod? Not, not, not. Chris is on the cod. Bag it up, boy. There he is. Ha <laughs> ha! Cod number three. Give it to him in a bit, Chris, mate. In a bit. <laughs> Well, <laughs> welcome back, people. I'm just sat here prepping up a few crab bait. Um, Chris has just lost another cod, just in the edge. So he's on fire at the minute. That's four now. I mean, in the space of 40 minutes. It's pretty mad. Once it turns on, like lately, it just turns on. Um, I mean, I'm not having very good luck. I haven't had one yet, so. But I'm sure I'll get one by the end of the day. I am fishing one sand eel still, and one peeler crab. All frozen bait. So. Keep an eye on them rods because the cod are about. Actually, you can see them in the screen. Not very well, but you never know. Might get a rod bender. And tis the season and all that. So we're going to smash a few mince pies. Do you know what I mean? We do love a good mince pie. So me and Chris are going to chew down on these. Well, when he's finished putting some more bait out, because uh, obviously he's just had the reel them in. Got it that he lost that one in the edge. It was a lot bigger as well. So <laughs> hopefully we might even get a double today. But uh, you never know. That, what's that? That rod's gone really left. 
Is that side gone left or is it this? Might have a fish on. Two seconds, guys. Fuck it. Excited, didn't I? Thought it was going left. Must have found a bit of side out there. Oh well, anyway, back to the mints, boys. In a bit. Bosh, right, people. Well, <laughs> the wind has picked up on Chesil Beach. Um, sea's got a bit loppy, so uh, the cod conditions are getting even better. It has gone quiet for a couple of hours, but uh, obviously Chris is for it. You got a bike, mate. Left hand rod. Chris just got, I was just, was just saying it went quiet for a bit, but Chris has just had another bite. Just coming up to low water now, so hopefully the incoming tide brings us a few more fish. Um, I was cold, but not for long. Bosh. Thanks to the mother-in-law. Got me this pen fierce smock. Absolute lovely fit. Windproof, waterproof proper doing the business not during any rain today but just to keep that wind chill off the old uh, off the old skeleton just keep makes you a bit more comfortable doesn't it no one likes to be cold when they're fishing so yeah 100% on this one it's not the most expensive one either and uh, does the job right anyway I'm gonna get my rods back out because I've just put new baits on and hopefully we'll see a few fish in a bit oh that's right people well first fish of the incoming tide and it's a dirty old dog. There you go. Hopefully it's a good sign that the fish are coming back on the feed. But uh, yeah, there we go. Had a slack liner, went down in the tide. It's hard to see the bites now, the wind's quite strong, but it just goes to show the fish still are out there. So hopefully we'll see plenty more today and uh, the fishing stays good. <laughs> Me and Chris have actually retrieved to the bivvy just to get out of the wind because it is quite cold. And uh, obviously it's only going to get colder as it goes into dark later on. So I'm going to try and stay as warm as possible. So there you go. Bosh. First fish of the incoming tide. Let's see if we can get a few more in a bit. Bosh. Right then people. Quick update. There you go. There's dogfish number three. It's the third fish of the incoming tide. Uh, I've gone down to one rod. Uh, blown my first reel up. Put that in the bag. Got the spare reel out. Put that on. Uh, blew that up with the third cast. Tried to let some brakes off in this wind, which yeah, just went out any of it. So down to one rod now, but one on one rod. Chris has still got two out there, fishing away. No more cod since, but we're still catching fish. It's very windy. A bit good, I'm not gonna line up, move my rules on. I just tried to get a bit too um too ahead of myself, do you know what I mean? I wanted to get a little bit more distance and it's just a bit too windy. Bang! Where she went. But I'm gonna get this little chap back now. Just about to have a pot noodle and a coffee, lunch time and all that. And uh, hopefully we'll see another fish. I mean, it's lovely catching dogfish and stuff like that, but you know, it'd be nice to see a different species out. A few anglers have turned up now as well, so this is sort of the best time of the tide we found, like halfway up to like high water. So yeah, anyway, that's about that. Gosh, you know me. Right people, well, Jezel has finally got to the point where it's sort of unfishable now. The wind's a bit of a joke, the sea's up. Just had one of my lines thrown in and uh, the bit is nearly the wrong way. So we're going to call it a night. We're going to call it a night, call it a day, night, whatever you want to call it. So if we don't see you before, see you after. And if not, I'll see you on the bank in a bit.